In 2008, Jay-Z was controversially selected as a headlining act for the UK music festival Glastonbury, with British rock legend Noel Gallagher saying, Hip-hop at Glastonbury? No chance. But when Jay-Z got up on stage in 2008, he would unknowingly shake up the entire British music scene and set the wheels in motion for one of its most iconic moments in 2019. Glastonbury is UK's main music festival and was, by and large, seen as a rock music festival. During the mid-2000s, indie rock was the dominant sound with bands like The White Stripes, Arctic Monkeys, The Killers, and Coldplay headlining the event. In fact, in 2006 and 2007, they had the same headliners of The Arctic Monkeys, The Killers, and The Who for two years running. However, in 2008, Glastonbury decided to mix things up. Their headlining acts were Kings of Leon, The Verve, and controversially, Jay-Z. And tickets for this festival weren't doing as well as they should have. Emily Eves, one of the festival's organizers, said, Jay-Z was probably the most controversial booking we have ever had. It just felt like an out-of-control storm that I was just never going to get out of. Every story, every day was just negative. We'd sold 80,000 tickets on the day of our ticket sale, and that's quite low for us. We normally sell out. We hadn't even announced Jay-Z at that point. And then we announced Jay-Z and people just took the lack of popularity for that year and the fact that we'd booked a different headliner as being this perfect storm of it's all over and they've lost their minds. And I didn't see it coming. I just thought we'd booked a really good, really good artist who's one of the best lyricists in the world who can come and do a really good hip hop show. The biggest vocal critic of this move was Noel Gallagher, whose band Oasis headlined Glastonbury in 1994 and 2004, and their song Wonderwall is ingrained within British culture. In an interview with BBC News, Noel Gallagher was asked why he didn't think the festival had sold out, and his simple answer was that Jay-Z was a headliner. He said, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you start to break it, then people aren't going to go. I'm sorry, but Jay-Z? No chance. He went on to say, Glastonbury has a tradition of guitar music and I'm not having hip-hop at Glastonbury. It's wrong. Hip-hop groups had played before at Glastonbury, but never headlined. In the 90s, The Roots, The Beastie Boys, and The Jungle Brothers played sets, and in 2000, Cypress Hill played on the largest stage at the venue, the Pyramid Stage. So having hip-hop's biggest artist playing as a headliner should not have been as controversial as it was made out to be. And in fairness, Noel Gallagher's views were not shared by everyone in the British rock scene. In 2007, the Arctic Monkeys invited British rapper Dizzy Rascal on stage as a special guest during their headline performance on the Pyramid stage. Kanye King was the founder of the MOBO Awards, which is basically the UK equivalent of the BET Awards, responded to Noel Gallagher's comments and said, Given that Glastonbury is trying to reach a younger audience and diversify, then I think it's important they embrace hip-hop. It seems only fitting that you should have a global superstar act like Jay-Z on the show. Glastonbury doesn't have that many hip-hop acts on the main stage, so maybe music lovers will get to see him and their opinions will change. In the run-up to the festival, there was a sense in the air that this was much more than about Jay-Z. It was about hip-hop, it was about black music, and it was the age-old situation of people being told that they didn't belong somewhere. On Sunday, the 28th of June, Jay-Z carried an enormous weight on his shoulders, the stage was set. Thousands of people had gathered around the pyramid stage while millions of others were watching at home on the BBC. Glastonbury was about to witness its first ever headlining hip hop act. Jay appears on stage carrying an electric guitar and you can hear the strumming of an acoustic guitar. The song being played was unmistakably Wonderwall. Jay breaks into song and starts singing. The opening lines, today's gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you, seemed incredibly fitting and the crowd sang along. But then, Jay-Z faced the crowd and said, I just got one thing to say, and then broke into the iconic opening line of 99 Problems with the music played by a rock band. Then, in the second verse, things took an even stranger turn. Jay-Z raps the iconic lines about being pulled over by the cops in 94, but the background music has been switched up. Instead, the band was now playing Back in Black by ACDC, and it fit perfectly into the song. Jay-Z was making a statement that rap music and rock music were not as different as people try to make them out to be. Jay also paid homage to the British music scene. His song, Is That Yo Bitch, used the backup track for The Prodigy's Smack My Chick Up. He then freestyled over Amy Winehouse's hit Rehab. Later on in the show, he also freestyled over Kanye and Estelle's American Boy. Jay-Z addressed the crowd and said, So they say you guys don't want me to be here tonight. They say you're not into hip-hop. 
I've got one question, where's the love? This was reciprocated with a massive roar from the crowd. The message was loud and clear. Hip hop belonged at Glastonbury. In the aftermath, it was seen that Jay-Z had answered his critics, especially Noel Gallagher. However, Noel claimed that his words were taken out of context. In an interview with Spin Magazine, Noel Gallagher was asked, you came out and said Jay-Z headlining Glastonbury was wrong? Noel replied and said, well, I never said those words. You need verbatim quotes here. I've been doing interviews with American magazines, and the way it's played itself out is that I said Jay-Z had no right to play Glastonbury, which is a crock of horseshit. I got off a plane and someone asked me about the fact that Glastonbury hadn't sold out for the first time in years, and if it was because of Jay-Z. I innocently mused I was probably right. From there, it grew into this crap that I was standing on an orange crate at Speaker's Corner saying, gather round, brothers and sisters. Have you heard what's happening at Glastonbury this year? And Noel revealed that he and Jay-Z had once met on quite friendly terms. I've hung out with Jay-Z in Tokyo. I've seen his show. It's not my bag, but it's all right. We have a mutual friend in Chris Martin. So I'm a guy who doesn't like hip hop. Shock. Horror. I don't dislike rappers or hip hop or people who like it. I went to the Def Jam tour in Manchester in the 80s when rap was inspirational. Public Enemy were awesome, but it's all about status and bling now, and it doesn't say anything to me, which is ironic seeing how people are referring to hip hop now. Whether Noel meant to or not, he had touched upon an elephant in the room. Glastonbury was the UK's biggest music festival, but hip hop had been largely neglected, and this was particularly the case for the UK's rap scene. In 2010, Dizzy Rascal had become even more popular since his guest performance with the Arctic Monkeys. He was now playing at the Pyramid stage just before Friday's headlining act, U2. However, their singer Bono had injured his back and was unable to play. In their absence, it seemed reasonable to bump Dizzy up to the headlining act, but instead the festival brought in the group Gorillaz to perform. In an interview, Dizzy said, I was one from the headline, and then someone dropped out, so they should have moved me up, but they put Gorillaz on or someone. Even though they'd seen me smashing the hell out of it, they were just scared. And then Gorillaz came on and no offense to them, but you're not getting the same thing. You can't put them on after me. Are you all right? Hip hop would finally have its second hip hop headliner at Glastonbury in 2015. Kanye West was announced as the headliner, but you could argue that there was even more controversy about this decision than Jay-Z. A petition on change.org was titled, cancel Kanye West headline slot and get a rock band. The petition said, Kanye West is an insult to music fans all over the world. We spend hundreds of pounds to attend Glasgow, and by doing so expect a certain level of entertainment. Kanye has been very outspoken on his views on music. He should listen to his own advice and pass his headline spot to someone deserving. And this petition had almost 140,000 signatures. And just like Jay seven years earlier, Ye had a point to prove. And facing the pyramid stage, he went off to a ferocious start. A review in The Guardian said, for all the talk of petitions against his appearance at Glastonbury, the crowd seemed entirely won over, yelling along. You can see why. He tears compellingly through an opening brace of tracks. Not even a stage invader during Black Skinhead seemed to dull the track's edge. However, there were some low points too. As talented as Ye is, there was one moment where he didn't play to his strengths. To pay homage to the UK crowd, he did a cover of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, and his voice was clearly no match for Freddie Mercury's original, and received mixed results. Kanye, at the end of the show, told the audience that they're watching, quote, the greatest living rock star on the planet, and Kanye's American confidence somewhat fell flat on the British audience. Whatever way Ye's performance went, another milestone was achieved, but the accolade of being the first UK rap artist was still up for grabs. And in 2019, this position was finally filled. Stormzy was set to headline the pyramid stage. The criticism this time around was the fact that Stormzy had only one album out at this stage, and it was joked that he may not have had enough songs for his set. Stormzy responded to this and said, I get it, only one album, where's all the number ones? But I think the argument doesn't even deserve the fuel. When June 28th comes, either everyone will be proved right or wrong, but I am the headliner and I will come and give you a headlining performance. And just like when Jay-Z headlined 11 years earlier, this was much more than just the artist who was on the stage. And just like Jay-Z before him, he was ready to put on a show. On that fateful night, Stormzy's performance started off with a video. On the screens, you can see Jay-Z speaking to Stormzy and giving him advice on headlining Glastonbury. Jay-Z can be heard saying, it's important for you to take that and say, okay, how can I create a culture around this whole thing? Because culture moves the whole world. Around this time, knife crime had reached its all-time high in the UK, and Stormzy and other grime artists had been accused of glamorizing and promoting this with their music. 
In 2017, Stormzy was so enraged by this that he went on public radio to defend himself. Speaking to a caller, he said, I feel like that, the caller's claim, is such a far-fetched statement. You see, for someone to say that grime music is the reason for the country's knife crime epidemic, that's wild. How do you even get there? So, on June 28, 2019, Stormzy had the full attention of the UK press and public on the pyramid stage. After the video with Jay-Z, Stormzy walked on. He teamed up with the legendary graffiti artist Banksy and wore a highly provocative item of clothing. It was a stab vest with the British Union jacket sprayed across it. As well as grime music, Stormzy's set was interspersed with gospel choirs and battle dancers. Chris Martin joined him on stage, as well as the then-upcoming rapper Santan Dave. Stormzy's performance received rave reviews with one stating, Stormzy's performance doesn't feel like a personal triumph so much as a victory lap for British rap. After decades as US rap's poor relation, here it is headlining the biggest music festival in the world in considerable style. Watching this set on TV was Noel Gallagher, and like the Grinch on Christmas morning, he had a sudden change of heart. Stormzy's lyrics were familiar to him, but he couldn't remember where. Then it hit him. He said, Oh, that's what my two lads are on about, because they'll be doing these dances in the kitchen when they're getting ready for school, and I'll be thinking, what's a Vossibop? I didn't realize it was to do with grime. Gallagher said that grime was as English as pulp, or the jam, or the kinks, and it's their own language, which is a great thing that something born on council estates out of poverty and street culture has got to the main stage at Glastonbury. Make sure to subscribe for more.